Good evening. I am Dr. Matthew Morrison, and I am the professor for ELE 385 Advanced Digital Systems. When you log on to Blackboard, uh, you will have a number of uh, pieces of information right here, the home page, information, content, discussions, groups, tools, and help. The overwhelming majority of things that I'm going to post on this course are going to be under content. So this video is for extra credit for lecture zero. Uh, if you do the nine problems that I have listed here, uh, you will be able to receive credit for one homework assignment. So you go to content and it will have the syllabus, extra credit lecture zero, uh, which you probably should will have open. So bring this over here. You'll bring these 10 questions up. And uh, as I mentioned in the email that I just sent out, I expect them to be handwritten. As I've said, they're due as you come into class at 930. I will not accept any late submissions. Uh, during the course of this video, I will explain a lot of detail why I expect the homework assignments to be handwritten. Um, but we will go over everything else here as well. So we will start out with the syllabus, which is I have here. Uh, this is a very popular comic that uh, a lot of professors and teaching assistants uh, appreciate. Uh, basically, you have the teaching assistant who's here. It's uh, some students come in. What did we cover last week in the class? Uh, it's in the syllabus. What's the like homework policy? It's in the syllabus. When are your office hours? It's in the syllabus. How will my grade be computed? Just holding up a sign that says in the syllabus. So the reason why is a lot of times you'll get really common questions from students. They go like, uh, that's in the syllabus or and that's in the uh, in the notes. Everywhere you should be able to find this. Now, something that's really important for you, this is a good habit to develop. In life, after you graduate and you get into an industry, nothing is more annoying to an employer than having to constantly do the work that they hired you to do. They're giving you money to do a job that they can't be doing on their own. So if they're constantly trying to do the thing that you're expecting, then it's just irresponsible. And my job is to not only give you knowledge, but to make you job ready. So this is a good habit to begin to develop. So here is the pertinent information. Uh, for answer for number one, or what are my email, office number, and office hours? So my email is morrison at go.olmiss.edu. My office is Anderson310. And my office hours are Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 12 to 2. The class is going to be held in Bishop 101 from 930 to 1045. So for those of you who are relatively new and you don't know where that is, I have the campus map here. So we are over here in Anderson Hall, right? So if you come out, there's Einstein's right here. And Bishop Hall is over here. So the best way to get there, you need to run two things. If you're coming from other sides of campus, you come down library lane, you go past the library, and you can walk up here to go to Bishop Hall. Or if you happen to be in Anderson for some reason, you walk down the sidewalk all the way up here, take this path, you go past, there's the Martin Dating Student Services that you usually have some kind of banner on the first week. Uh, the Kenyan Observatory is here. So walk up this way. The If you're walking up the path, the way you'll know that you're at the building is that there's, there's this small set of parking spots right here. So once you see some cars parked right there, you know you're there. So that's where the class is located. Uh, my teaching assistant is Mr. George Humphrey. He's my PhD student. His email is gahumphrey at go.olmiss.edu. And his office hours, uh, we'll, I'll update them, but I have these listed right now. Anderson 309 is right across the hallway from me. Um, we're going to make sure that our office hours, whatever they happen to be, don't overlap. So that way you have a, the optimal amount of time to be able to ask us questions. Uh, the textbook that you have ordered is Computer Organization and Design, the Hardware Software Interface. It's the fifth edition. Uh, Patterson and Hennessy are the authors. Um, David Patterson is the Department Chair of Computer Engineering at Cal Berkeley, and John L. Hennessy, until very recently, was the president of Stanford University. So number two is state the grading percentage breakdown. So here it is. This is the answer to that question. Oh, also before I just go into more detail, if you have not taken digital design or the digital design lab and passed it with a C or better, you need to speak to your advisor immediately. You will not have the knowledge set to be able to get through this course because all the things that we go over in 385 are dependent upon this material. So the grading breakdown is as follows. So we have the general 
uh, conventional 90, 80, 70, 60 grading scale, A, B, C, D, and F. Uh, test one and test two and the final are each worth 20%. I will go into more detail about what I uh, have for every exam. Uh, additionally, I have in-class quizzes, TGOs, I'll describe what that means in a moment, and the internet learning services are each worth 15%. And I'll describe what those are later. Upward grade adjustments are possible depending on the average and final class distribution averages for all students in the class at the professor's discretion. What this means is that if I, for some reason, decide that I want to round your grade up, I can. So let's say you have an 88.1. And for some reason, I can decide to do an upward grade adjustment. By putting on upward grade adjustments and not saying downward grade adjustments, I've guaranteed in the syllabus that in the event that you have above one of these scores, I cannot decide to lower your grade. And this is the importance of a syllabus. They are actually contracts between the faculty and the students. Uh, the final exam is cumulative. However, there's a heavy emphasis that will be placed in the final one third of the course material. Um, I am pretty straightforward when it comes to exams. Uh, I'm not do, I don't do trick questions. I don't fool you around. You won't be very well prepared. Talk to any of my former students. You will know it's coming on an exam. Additionally, uh, upon completion of course, you may credibly claim, claim on a resume. So these are what you can actually put into your resume to indicate that you have certain technical tools and skills, that you have completed these certain internet learning services from Cadence, and that you can actually complete these specific tasks. And we will actually do a lot of resume development in this course. So not to go into too much detail, but these are the Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology objectives. In order to actually give you a degree in electrical engineering, we have to meet a certain number of requirements in a certain number of classes. So this is, our, uh, this is us just being straightforward and open on being accountable to you. So we have to have an ability to apply knowledge of mathematics, science, and engineering, an ability to design a component system or process to meet desired needs within realistic constraints such as an economic, environmental, social, political, ethical, health, safety, manufacturing, and sustainability, an ability to identify, formulate, and solve engineering problems, an understanding of professional and ethical responsibility. I will be going into going quite a bit uh, about what you are expected to do in terms of your academic integrity and uh, your academic dishonesty. Uh, G, an ability to communicate effectively. You'll be required to do that in write-ups. A recognition of the need for an ability to engage in lifelong learning. A knowledge of contemporary issues. And an ability to use the techniques, skills, and modern engineering tools necessary for engineering practice. We will emphasize this one quite a bit in this class. So attendance is basically required. Uh, I expect you to be in class every day. Your aspiring professionals and professional and environment, you're expected to be there every day. So I'm going to hold you to that same standard. Uh, if you miss a class and you can't turn in your homework, you have to have some sort of documentation from a physician, work supervisor, supervisor police report, or major professor. Uh, in some cases, some of you might be doing research with a professor and you have to miss a class or a conference or something like that. Um, Doctor's notes from after the date in question are not acceptable. It shouldn't make sense. You'd be surprised by the number of cons students have tried to pull. Uh, ethical responsibility. Just tell the truth. I will always reward integrity. I will always reward hard work. If you tell me the truth at the get-go, I will not give you a hard time. I, I, I attempt to be very fair in this. Uh, but if you're not, that's when we have, we'll have real problems. So number three is going to be state the YouTube website where lecture notes will be posted. It is posted here at this website. Uh, I have it open here already for you um, at http www.youtube.com slash user slash Ole Miss VLSI. You'll go here and you'll see actual lectures that will be provided for you. And I'm saying this again, I expect you to be here every day. I do not post the PDFs themselves. Oh, hold on, let me uh, say one thing here uh, real quick. The YouTube videos are a regular uh, lecture supplement, not a replacement. I expect you to be there every day. Again, your objective is to become a professional. 
So you should start acting professionally now. If you think that skipping every class and uh, not going to work, if you think you're just going to suddenly develop that habit once you get into the real world, uh, I got some news for you. It doesn't really happen. And uh, you, I don't want you to get fired. I don't want you to go out there and struggle. So uh, this is a good habit to build now. So the answer to number four, the question is, why do I post videos to YouTube but do not post the notes to Blackboard? This is a very common question I get from students. So it is here, and if you ask me, again, I will send you to the syllabus. I'll hold up my little, it's in the syllabus sign. I do not post the PDF notes themselves to Blackboard. I found this approach maximizes student understanding while minimizing instances of academic dishonesty. The specific form, so that's the answer to number four right here. The specific form of academic dishonesty that I'm attempting to mitigate is something I call academic bullying. Often you'll have a student who doesn't really want to do the work uh, and has been skating for a while on the back of somebody else. Um, when you allow typing, what ends up happening, I, I allowed typing before and I, I uh, allowed a student to get into this situation, which I regret, but I'm not going to allow it anymore, where one student would type it up and the other student would make them give them their assignment. Uh, and this tends to happen quite a bit. You get situations where you have group projects, uh, one student slacking, one student's avoiding the work, one student makes the other student do all the work. We are not going to allow that in here. So handwritten. Uh, I'll also go into uh, other things with a topical guide objective, specifically why do I insist they're handwritten. But that's one thing uh, by putting it in there, uh, by making the students actually go to YouTube, that actually makes sure that they are... Uh, uh, not committing acts of academic dishonesty. So number five, what does TGO stand for? When are TGOs due? And what should you do if you can't make it to class on time? So TGO stands for Topical Guide Objective. They are due at the beginning of every class. At the beginning of every class. Once I start lecture, do not hand them in. Uh, if you are late, you need to do one of two things. You need to email me at my email, which is morrison.go.olemiss.edu. Now, if you don't, and otherwise, if you don't have a good reason, we will discuss after lecture whether or not I'll accept your homework. One of my major pet peeves is if I have started lecture just coming up in the front and just slapping the homework down, I will throw your homework in the trash. I'm generally a pretty laid back guy about in class. I tend to crack jokes and I try to make students feel better. But that is one thing I will not tolerate. I'll give you one warning. If you do it twice, you'll get a zero and I won't accept it. Um, but generally what you should do instead is let the lecture end. Come to me after lecture. I'll check my email. If you email me before, I'll know. It's okay. Relax. And uh, we'll get this fine. Now, the other, uh, number six, what is the course policy regarding submission of TGOs? This italic italicized line right here this one right here not only I'll just underline failure to earn a 70% average on TGOs will earn an automatic D or worse in the course regardless of exam performance now you will see real quickly that it's really hard if you do the TGOs uh, on a daily on a daily basis uh, to get worse, worse than a 70 in fact uh, it's really rare to have a student below an 85%. Very rare. If you're if you're at midpoint of the semester and you're below a 70, uh, rest assured, it's there's probably a very good op chance that you've bombed a couple of the the exam as well. So um, there's a very clear correlation, but it's there in the syllabus. I don't care if you got A's on both exams. I do not care if you don't get a 70% average on the TGOs. You will get a D, and that's non-negotiable. All right, so pop quiz. Okay, so I should also go here uh, in the TGO policy. So this is on Blackboard as well as in content. I have the TGO policy. So they're due at the beginning of every class. You should email me before class. Most of you have smartphones now. Almost all of you have smartphones. This is very different than when I was in school. So send me an email. You don't have an excuse. Get to class on time. I will not accept as an excuse more than once that the bus was running late. Get on an earlier bus. That's just life. Um, so TGOs are announced in class. I'll tell you which ones are due. Um, content, T 
TGOs. So you go Blackboard. Here's your folder right here. And it will bring up. So this is section one, which we are starting out here. During the lecture, I will tell you which parts. The off the the way this works is, uh, you the you should be very knowledgeable of how, of the phrasing of these questions. Oftentimes, and you will see on my exam either the exact wording of the question or very very similar wordings. So I will tell you right now, and I'll describe in class why this is. I have no problem telling you this. The very first problem on the very first exam will be in this exact wording, define and differentiate clearly between computer architecture and computer organization, and I'll typically say using three examples of each. And I will go into much more detail as, as to why that is. Now, number uh, seven, I state, the question is, in the TGO policy, I describe four reasons why I do homework this way. State them. So I want you to copy, handwrite these four, and state them. One, the method is augmented from the U.S. Naval Nuclear Power School, which I went to when I was in the Navy. The purpose is to teach organization and proper study habits for success beyond graduation. So uh, one of the things that I learned is that um, oftentimes students are not taught how to study. And you kind of coast on intellect and you coast on being able to do things uh, based on just your talent. And I can tell you right now, no matter who you are, Everyone from Einstein all the way down to the person with the lowest, lowest amount of engineering and science talent ever, you will hit some point in your life where your talent is not enough, where your hard work and organization and dedication are what will carry you through. And it might not happen in my class, and it might not happen while you're at Ole Miss, but it'll happen someday. And I want to prepare you for that moment, and I want you to succeed at that moment. Number two. I insist on handwritten because there's a clear correlation between professors insisting on written, as, written assignments and improved final grades. Uh, a couple, see, was it sp spring of 2013, I was a teaching assistant, and I took over for my advisor who was very sick, and I taught the first third of the course the way he wanted it taught, and then after it was clear he couldn't come back, I then taught the last two-thirds of the course with the topical guide objectives. The average scores went up. 10%. I want you all to succeed, and I want you all to succeed beyond my classroom. Um, number three, insisting on handwritten assignments mitigates cheating, specifically academic bullying, which I have alluded to before. And number four, this will permit me to see who's putting in effort so I may reward your work appropriately. Even though you're basically copying notes every day, it is very clear who's doing the effort and who isn't. Um, and I will, you'll hear me say this over and over again. Whenever you get in a situation where you're struggling on exams or struggling on quizzes, I'll tell you I will always reward effort. If you're working hard, you will pass my class. Plain and simple. All right, so quizzes. I have unannounced quizzes. Now, here are the way these pop quizzes work. 50% uh, of the grade is you being there. So you show up, you get an automatic 50%. Uh, the purpose of the quizzes is to give you a pressurized environment where you can be honest with yourself as to your actual process and progress in learning the material. The whole goal is a lot of times the first time you'll actually ever uh, encounter a pressurized environment where you have to under, uh, complete the question will be on an exam. And I don't think that's the case. There's a moment like, okay, we got it. Uh, pressure uh, put you in a pressure situation announcing the quizzes allows you to kind of study for it and be prepared for it uh, and you aren't quite honest with yourself so in these in this case is there's students who are going to be keeping up the whole time and there's a lot of students who will put off trying to learn it as long as possible i will always reward effort if you're keeping up and you're doing your best it'll show if you're slacking off and you're not trying on the pop quizzes it will show now I do exams a little differently. I have, um, they're going to in two parts. Uh, the first part is a take-home portion. Uh, the whole goal of my exam is to simulate the job application process. So if you go on Blackboard, you will see under content a folder called professional development.
And under professional development, I have sample resumes, a sample cover letter, and power verbs for an effective resume. I will actually discuss before an exam how you actually can build a good and effective resume. And I'll expect it in a certain format, and you'll be able to see. And the, whole, and the first portion of the exam will be a, uh, an actual job listing that you will be qualified upon completion of 385. So you're actually going to be simulating applying for a job. So then the second part is you theoretically get offered an interview. So you actually have to prepare for the interview. So the second part of this exam is actually completing a set of questions that correlate to the topical guide objectives and example questions that are meant to simulate preparing you for the job interview. So in, a, in the way, it's actually going to be preparing you for the exam. So in a way, I get to give you credit for studying. I will always reward your effort. The second part is a closed book, closed notes examinations, which simulates the job interview. So you're actually going to be putting together combining concepts and actually in a way to demonstrate that you actually know what it is that you're doing. Um, when I was up at Princeton University uh, last March, I was talking about how I uh, was doing this and I got a lot of professors up going, well, that's actually great. I want to see how you do. So we did it uh, last spring in my, the CMOS class that I taught. The students did very well. And you'll do the same thing. Uh, the whole goal by the end of the semester is you've actually gone through three different preparing for uh, job interviews uh, to simulate that process. You'll, and you'll have a very good resume to be able to use when you actually apply for jobs. The other part is this Cadence Internet Learning Services. This is something that you will have a unique opportunity that's essentially unique across the country. We're actually working with Cadence to build this co uh, course to actually uh, augment this. So Cadence is one of the world's, world's leader in electronic design automation and digital systems design and sign off. And you'll learn what all that means, but you'll have actually have access to their internet learning services. So I'm going to be breaking this down into 75 minutes of video, and this is actually going to kind of go into like a flipped course model in, this, in the last third of the course. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be emailing all of your ILS account information to Cheryl Mendenhall at Cadence. Uh, you will be expected to create your account. Uh, during the uh, course, uh, towards the end of the third portion of the course, you'll actually be expected to complete the modules on their site. Uh, you'll be completing a lot of the labs next semester in 386. But the whole goal is to actually have a number of certificates that you've completed with Cadence to demonstrate that you are actually more knowledgeable, more hireable, so you can get better jobs, get better paid, or get that job that you specifically want in the specific place. The whole goal is to set you up in a position to succeed. There we go. So the relevant fall 2016 dates, you probably want to know all of these. August 22nd, classes begin, so that you have this, that's today or yesterday, depending on when you're watching it. Uh, August 26th, Friday, is the last day to add classes. So if you need to talk to advisors, find your advisors, add your classes. Next Friday, um, September 2nd, is the last day to withdraw and be able to get a full refund. So if you want your money back on any of your classes, you need to do it by then. September 15th is the day of the first exam. By October 3rd, you need to have your, if you need to withdraw from a course for any reason, you need to do it by that date. If you don't withdraw from a course, you're stuck with the grade. By October 10th, midterm grades are due. Um, I think only one or two of you are in that grade range where I actually have to do that, but I always provide midterm grades to all my students, including where you're at and where I think you can get to. That's something I do for all my students every semester. Exam two is on October 20th. Uh, November 21 through 25 is the Thanksgiving holidays. And December 5th through December 9th is the final exam week. So this is the course schedule. Through the first, through the first ex two exams, we'll be covering the course materials in the textbook. And so we're going to be learning about the instruction set architecture, computing performance, basics of uh, assembly language, uh, MIPS, which is uh, multi-stage multi uh, without interlocking processing stages computer arithmetic. Um, in example, uh, then the exam one on the 15th here, 
uh, single cycle data path, multi-cycle data path, pipelining, uh, exceptions and interrupts, memory hierarchy, and cache, uh, memory cache. After this, it's all internet learning services tools. So the cost that anybody in industry would have to pay in order to be able to do all this is approximately $6,000. You're getting it all for free. So you don't ever say that uh, we've always just screwed you over because now you're getting 6K back. And then we will have the final exam during the final exam week. Uh, during the last lecture, what I will typically do is I will, pr I will have a printout of your grades and where you're at um, and what it is you need to do in order to be able to uh, what grades you basically need to be able to get in order to get the grade you want. Um, I typically will either have pizza or some sort of uh, breakfast item. It's 930, so it may be hard to get the exact items I want, pizza or breakfast item on the last day of class. Um, incompletes, personal or family emergency only. Uh, religious observances, you need to tell me by the end of the second week if you need to miss class for any reason that has uh, religious reasons. Otherwise, uh, I have to, I can't excuse you by, uh, by law. Uh, disabilities, uh, you need to go to Office of Student Disability Services, um, the Memorandum of Accommodation, so I know what I need to do to be able to help you get through this class. If you don't know what that is, you probably don't uh, have that. Um, academic integrity, so you see I have a lot of stuff here about academic integrity. Um, First things are, you're probably wondering about uh, number nine. Number nine is right here, but I will get to that in a second. As a, I have, this is a quote that I uh, you should take to heart right here. As aspiring computing professionals, you are to approach academic integrity with the utmost sincerity. We have responsibility to society to perform good, honest work. The public places their trust and well-being in you every time you do work. If you cheat, you have demonstrated that you are incapable and or unwilling to meet the standard, and I will act accordingly. Your commitment to integrity is every bit as important, if not more so, than the grade on your transcript. So there is a Mississippi M book. You can Google M book and a lot of every, pretty much everything in there about academic integrity I have taken from it. Um, so you can find that information here. This is basically those quotes. Uh, number nine. I'm sorry, number eight, state my course policy regarding academic dishonesty offenses. So this is my course policy. Incident one, any incident of cheating on a homework assignment or quiz. I will require you to write a one-page article on an engineering incident where failure to uphold ethical principles resulted in catastrophe and an automatic reduction of one letter grade. This essay must be in your own words. Plagiarism of that essay will result in incident two which has happened. If you, if incident two, if I catch you again, you will receive an automatic grade of F in the course and academic probation. Now, this is another thing. If you have a previous incident of academic dishonesty in your record during your academic career, I automatically go to incident two. I will automatically assign you a grade of F on your first incident in this course, and you will receive academic probation. Uh, I don't even need to recommend academic probation. If for whatever reason you're in this boat and you're on your second chance, uh, you, you know you shouldn't be cheating. You know better at this point. So I have a lot of uh, quotes here. Uh, you can read through them at your leisure. Uh, but the key thing is you should know what it is that they mean when they say plagiarism, when they say cheating, when they say using someone else's work. Why is that important? So plagiarism is a serious offense in which someone's work is presented as one's own. Um, the key thing that ends up happening in my courses when students cheat, paraphrasing the work of another without properly citing that work, keeping the content and or structure. So it's not one of those things where you can just basically paraphrase the same thing and keeping the same structure. No, you have to write a unique structure that is your own. Uh, an unfair use such as taking large portions of another work without substantial addition of one's own ideas or commentary. Um, that comes from plagiarism.com from this link, which you can go to there. Um, using someone else's work. A student who misrepresents the work of another as his or her own. Um, don't do that. 
uh, and don't let someone else do it for you. Knowing allow, knowingly allowing someone to represent your work as their own. Um, a person who knowingly assists another person in falsely representing work is also subject to academic discipline. Think of it this way. If you have a, if you're getting your diploma, if, if the person you're helping is getting a diploma, do you think you're going to get a portion of their salary? Do you think they're going to help you out? They're not. So don't help them cheat. Gaining to attempt or attempting to gain an unfair advantage, um, breaking down into the trying to deal into the stealing books from materials from the library or the computer center. Uh, in this course, there are group projects. If you obtain another group's code and present it as your own, this qualifies as gaining to, or attempting to gain an unfair advantage. Giving false information or documents. This is something else that happens. So I talk a lot about uh, being honest and straightforward with me with the TGOs. Just be honest. If you didn't do it, just say so. I'll work with you. But if you tell me that you did some work and then I find out you didn't, you're in real trouble. Falsely attesting that work has been done when it has not been is a real problem. And I talk about it here. In this course, there are group coding projects. If I find that a member of a group is not contributing their fair share of work through active means, example, coercing a a classmate verbally or physically or passive means for example ignoring emails or claiming work is being done and then asking a classmate to do it at the last minute but still expects to receive the same grade then that is an instance of falsely attesting work has been done when has not been and last and certainly not least disorderly behavior that disrupts the academic environment violates the standard of fair access to the academic experience if you come in and you're constantly berating people and you're constantly trying to ask me obnoxious questions or doing so in a way that is sh shouting down us, uh, uh, shouting me down or doing things like that, you are not only being academically dishonest, but you're actually hurting your other classmates because they paid money to gain access to that education. So you're actually hurting those students while doing so. All right. So the last thing. This is my course website. You can come here um, if you wish to. Uh, if you go here, past teaching evaluations, I have all of my teacher evaluation results from the past. Uh, you can go here and see what students have thought of me in the past. Um, teacher evaluation result, for example, you go here. In this case, I had almost a perfect score. Um, I also here have uh, student comments, so you can see what students have thought about me in the past, uh, so you can see what uh, students think of me and you can get a general idea of what to expect this semester um, but the key thing that you're going to want to know here um, also I have ABET accreditation Cadence University program uh, advising sheets if for some reason that you you know um, the, do the computer engineering emphasis so if you need to know what classes you need to take that information is available right here you don't need to go anywhere else and to find it um, but the last question is, on my professional website, I have my teaching vision and teaching mission statements, and I want you to state them both. So this is my goal for teaching right here. Right. So teaching mission statement, to develop computer engineering students academically, creatively, and morally, and to engender ideals of integrity, professionalism, and lifelong learning and in teaching in order to graduate engineers who are dedicated to a career of utilizing the principles of science for humanity's benefit. My vision statement is to develop one of the computer best computer engineering programs in the world by imbuing students with world-class study habits by combining Navy teaching methods, topical guide objectives, with modern engineering tools. So a lot of cadence stuff here. So I've, we are doing very well towards achieving this uh, vision statement. So this is the end of the video. Um, I expect you to have the handwritten extra credit assignment to me by the first day of class, uh, which is Tuesday at 930.